Man, some people don't know a good weapon when they see it, do they? You suck! I'd make a serious case that the Scottish Resistance is one of the most underrated weapons in the game next to the Pain Train. Except it's way better than the Pain Train. But I've heard so many people ask for a bad weapon academy on the Scottish Resistance because of one little stat that really isn't even that bad. And they completely ignore all the really awesome upsides this weapon has. And really, I don't even think that many people are using it properly to begin with. So, if you really want to, you could call this an Underrated Weapon Academy, but I'm not gonna call it that because the name Underrated Weapon Academy rolls off the tongue like Icelandic when you're drunk. I'm speaking in defense of the Scottish Resistance. Described as the Thinking Man Sticky Bomb Launcher, the Scottish Resistance is highly specialized for defense, boasting a whopping 6 more active stickies, a 25% faster firing speed, and quite possibly the best stat, you can control which traps you detonate without having to blow them all at once. Watching a specific choke point but a spy decides to back cap the point? Bam! Whip around and he's dead and your choke point is still safely guarded. You can even see your sticky trap outlines from anywhere on the map, meaning it's also easy to tell when one of them is being destroyed. It also has the ability to destroy enemy sticky bombs with its explosion, meaning you can throw a sticky out of the gate at the start of the round to get any traps in that radius, or around a corner for the same effect. It's an effect that comes in handy more often than you think. However, it does have a downside, and I'm not going to pretend it isn't significant. Sticky Bombs already have an arm time of about 0.7 seconds, and the Scottish Resistance more than doubles that by adding an extra 0.8 seconds of arm time, meaning you'll be waiting 1.5 seconds until your bombs are ready to go off. What this means is that Sticky Spamming, one of Demo's most powerful tools, isn't nearly as effective. You can still do it, but it'll take a lot longer and it's best utilized against unaware enemies. Other than that, it does the same damage as the Stock Launcher, and you can still Sticky Jump with it the same way as normal. So really, this is a lot like the Liberty Launcher in that one stat is all it takes for people to say, nope, not worth it, and go back to their preferred weapon of choice, but I'm here to say this is leagues better than the Liberty Launcher. So here's why. This is a weapon that specializes in traps and area denial, but I see a lot of people using it, quite frankly, wrong, and then getting frustrated when it's not working for them. I'll often see people setting up multiple traps on vastly different choke points that they can't hope to watch all at once, and then getting overwhelmed because they can't keep track of them. That's just not how this is meant to be used. On chokier maps, you need to lay down several traps not on multiple chokes, but throughout one choke, effectively making it impregnable. Think of it more like a sniper sightline, and less like several entrances you need to watch all at the same time. You need to think ahead of the enemy. You could lay down a decoy trap that's easily spotted and destroyed, making the enemy think they're safe, or, in a more optimistic scenario, they'll just walk over it anyway, giving you a free kill. If they're smarter though, you'll be able to get them with the second trap that you've placed just out of view. But what if more enemies start pouring in now that you've detonated? Aren't you screwed now that you can't just sticky spam your way out of the situation? Well, that's where secret escape plan trap number three comes in. If you start running away like you're scared and injured, classes like scouts can't resist chasing you down, and that's when you whip around and detonate your final trap. Combine this with the use of your primary, and you can single-handedly lock down any choke point you want, and the faster firing speed means you can get new traps set up quickly. This can be such a big help for your team on maps with limited ways to get to the objective. If you completely lock down the flank route single-handedly, that only gives the enemy one option to advance, and that's huge because it means only one person needs to watch this point while 11 people can watch the other. Even on more open maps, you can make a full-on carpet of death with your extra sticky capacity that people are still just going to walk right over for some reason because when someone sees a Scottish Resistance sticky, I don't think they expect the demo using it to actually be watching it. Honestly, I find it kind of odd that Lazy Purple doesn't like this weapon considering how adamant he was on patience with your stickies and how stickies haven't missed until you detonated them. That's such good advice for using the Scottish Resistance because you can be hyper effective at this. It doesn't matter if the trap you set was originally intended for your escape when falling back from the choke. If someone walks over it, they walk over it. 
On control points in the payload cart especially, this can be so devastating. You can single-handedly prevent anyone from even touching the cart, lock down their spawn, have multiple traps ready to go, and constantly set up so they have no chance of getting through, hit the sickest air shot of your entire life in the meantime, and by the time they finally kill you, you realize just how oppressive you were being when you get auto-balanced to the team you were just crushing and lose. Oh. On the subject of primaries, weapons like the Iron Bomber and Loose Cannon are my favorites to pair with it. Because the Iron Bomber's shorter fuse time makes it feel like a substitute sticky launcher, and the Loose Cannon performs well in the same choke-heavy environments that the Scottish Resistance thrives in, also acts like a substitute sticky spammer, and in the best case scenarios, can even launch people into a waiting trap for the most devastating one-two punch imaginable. Now, I'm not going to pretend there aren't drawbacks. If your traps are down, then yes, you are pretty vulnerable to getting rushed down, much more so than with the sticky launcher, and especially if you are pairing it with the loose cannon. And you can't sticky spam nearly as effectively, meaning you need to be way more reliant on your primary, and you're going to be spending a lot of time setting up traps and reloading, which isn't a play style for everyone, I can understand that. And on top of this, sometimes your own traps can screw you over if you end up standing just a bit too close to them. But what you trade for aggression, you more than make up for in resilience. Even then, it's not like your sticky spam capabilities are worthless or anything. You can still easily hurl a bunch of bombs at a group and send them all flying. Lots of people say it's useless on offense because you can't sticky spam as well, but it's really not. Depending on the team you're fighting against, or the game mode, defense is going to want to push forward to keep the front line as far away from the point as possible, or to capture the point you're currently defending, and you can so easily prevent them from doing so. In fact, the faster firing speed can actually help you set up a pretty huge trap in a reasonable amount of time, so even though it takes longer for the bombs to activate, you're able to get way more damage out once they do. You can freak the hell out of any engineer by hurling far more stickies at them than they could ever hope to deal with unless they used a short circuit. Even the reloading issue isn't that big of one. Consider the fact that if you put down two traps with a stock launcher, or just detonate your trap because you were sticky spamming, all of those stickies at once go to waste. With the Scottish Resistance, you get way more bang for your sticky buck because you can feel so much more assured that all of your stickies are accomplishing something. So unlike the stock launcher where if you detonate you have to set up all 8 stickies, reload those again, repeat, with the Scottish Resistance, you blow a trap of 3 stickies, reset those, and you're good to go, back to playing the game while still having a bunch of traps active. While the setup is definitely longer, which can absolutely hurt if you die or blow all of your traps, once you are set up, you're a force to be reckoned with that the enemy team is going to have a hard time getting through. With this weapon, you're the world's slowest one-man army. And while it's not a big deal, it's absolutely worth mentioning that this weapon is meta in MVM. However, I'm not the best demo in MVM. I have a hard time memorizing the spawn points I need to trap, which makes me a lot less effective, so I'm not the best person to talk about how useful it is there. I just don't get it, man. Why does no one but me like this weapon? I'm never a big fan of options that can feel kind of brainless to use. Even if they're ultimately less effective or a lot harder to use, I love to take options that just feel more satisfying. Like, can I kill two scouts rushing at me with the stock flamethrower by just holding down the fire button? Yeah. Can I do the same thing with the Dragon's Fury by two-tapping both of them with perfectly aimed center mass shots? Yeah. And I'll have way more fun doing that. That's kind of how I feel about the Scottish Resistance. Like, yeah, Sticky Spam is really effective, but it's also really easy and brainless, so I just don't like doing it. Like, hey, I shot eight 100 damage explosives at a group of enemies and they all died. Well, of course they fucking did. When you're forced to be tactical and pushed out of your comfort zone, I think that can lead to some really fun plays, and it just makes your brain feel large and foldy. I'm not going to pretend that the stock launcher is brainless all the way down. There's absolutely some smart stuff you can do with it, and the same goes for the flamethrower comparison I just made. But the point is, you kind of have the option to be brainless, 
And usually it ends up being just as effective, if not more so, than actually thinking things through. I feel like this weapon is a case where ultimately it comes down to preference. A lot of people aren't going to want to walk the walk of the ultimate area denial tool when they just want to frag people. That's fine. But those that do know that this weapon is far from bad. And if you play your cards right, you can turn the entire enemy team into chunky, red paste. And that is my defense of the Scottish Resistance. I rest my case. Why would you just stand on him? 